John. John. <coughs> John. Yeah. Okay, you're awake. That means I can go. John, if you're a parent you looking get... for some extra what? support in raising your kids to know, love, and follow Jesus, I have a great resource for you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to brush my teeth, but let's hear it. Okay. Over the next few months, our friends at Christian Parenting are focusing on all the topics that matter to you and your family, from navigating politics during the election season, yikes, discipling your kids, that's good, and teaching them good faith habits, even better, to helping your kids develop a secure identity in Christ. They have wonderful resources to help you pray over your kids this school year. You go, John. Uh, Dave, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like Christian Parenting is on a mission to help parents like us Mm -hmm. to set aside perfection and grow into the perfectly imperfect parent God created us to be. Am I I right on that? For just waking up, you're spot on, Johnny. Thank you. Christian Parenting provides practical resources to help parents instill biblical values, nurture character, and foster a deep relationship with God and their children. I love that. This is great. Yeah. You know, I see that they have printed products for kids and adults, digital resources, Mm -hmm. and podcasts to help us confidently raise the next generation of culture-changing Christians. Yeah, it took a lot to get all that stuff up the stairs, but I'm glad you see it. Subscribe <laughs> to great free parenting resources each week at christianparenting.org slash sign up. That's christianparenting.org slash sign up. Hi, I'm Dave Barnes. And I'm John McLaughlin. And welcome to Dadville. Dadville is a podcast where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of awesome dadding. It's funny thoughts and deep talks. So please, enjoy your time here in Dadville and enjoy this episode with... Dave and me. John. Dave, wake up. Oh my God. John. Are you awake? Yeah, I'm, well, I am now. Gosh. Okay, couple quick things. One, yeah, okay. again, you're always welcome to sleep inside your house. You don't have to oh, be out here in the car. And two, if I can for a second just address the audience while you're waking up and why are your you, pants on. Why did you wake me up to address the audience? Because I want you to hear this, Dave. Okay. I never want you to forget how important it is to us that the supplements we take mm-hmm. are of the highest oh, quality. Okay. And that's why for many years, mm-hmm. Dave, mm-hmm. we both have been drinking AG1. Here's yeah. here's yours. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, take it. No, go ahead. No, take no, it. Take it. Take it. Give me some liquid. No, just do the powder. Oh, yeah. Unlike many supplement brands, AG1 is constantly <laughs> searching for how to do things better. You okay? Mm, I'm getting there. At 52 iterations of their formula and counting, their team is always, always, and I say always, trying to find better ways to source, test, and aim to find the best quality ingredients available. While unnerving, John, you're right. That's so right. many people have asked us if AG1 is a real deal. <laughs> Daily. <And> trust me. <laughs> there's a reason why we've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Three words, Dave. Quality. Qual- oh. For AG1, it's not just a buzzword. No. It's a commitment backed by expert-led scientific research, high quality ingredients, industry leading manufacturing, and rigorous testing. Oh, I'm so talking rigorous. Rig- People sweating, rigorous. just sweating. getting the test done. Yeah. At each step of the process, AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. We know we can trust what's in every scoop of AG1 because it's NSF certified for sport. That's right. And that's the highest and most rigorous independent quality and safety certification program in the supplement industry. AG1's ingredients are heavily researched for efficacy and and quality, and yep. I love that every scoop also includes prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for Dave's get support. We partnered with AG1 for so long because they make such a high quality product that we genuinely look forward to drinking every day, every single day, or day. Er. So, if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, you do. start with AG1. Right here, right here. Try AG1 and get a free, that's right, mm-hmm. free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1 slash dadville. That's drinkag1 slash dadville. Check it out. Johnny. Dave, we have I've, I've missed you, Dave. I know it's it's been we've been ships in the night, I feel like. Yeah, we have um, to which quote is very, Matt Carney. Yeah, and if you change one letter in that first word, it's a whole different definition that I'm equally as interesting in interested in. Yeah. And I'm gonna let you figure out which letter. No, I think I've got it. <laughs> um which I feel like has been a lot of Boy Scout camps. <laughs> How are you? You drinking some coffee? We both have well, our no, coffees. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't want to start here, John. We're gonna do it. Let's do it. This is my mushroom coffee. 
Oh, I didn't know you're into psychedelics. Well, let me. Can I say something before I say that? Because yeah. immediately, that people... totally explains you being completely naked. <laughs> it, uh, am I? <laughs> oh boy, boy, this stuff is strong. Yeah. yeah. Also, I didn't know you were bald. Um, I got these at. Let me say this first. I'm gonna listen. Methodical. Yeah. I love. It has nothing to do with my deep hey, love. You want to? Let's give some people. Uh, <laughs> what are you drinking? The sound bite. Yep. That's some methodical you're hearing That's right there. methodical coffee right there. It's not that I don't love methodical. I wore my methodical shirt out and about this week, and I had people ask me about mm-hmm. it. I love methodical. They're our best friends. I, I just wanted I'm wearing to hat right now. Yeah, you are. Um, and the only thing you're wearing actually, That's right. hat, which feels. Yeah. E- well, know. I didn't want you to be the only one naked. <laughs> you're fast. Yeah, I'm amazed how quickly you disrobed, and I'm sure your wife said that before too. So it has nothing to do with my affinity for methodical. Yeah. I just wanted to try this mushroom thing because it's like. You know, you, you, I'm sure everybody's seen the ads, you know, and until they sponsored it, I'm not going to say their name because <laughs> yeah. they got to pay for that no, space. they got to pay but, for it. What, what, uh, so what is it? It's literally it's just, just a bunch. Yes, it's like six different mushrooms they grind up and it has Does like. Does it look like coffee beans? Like coffee grounds? Kind of. I mean? Yeah, kind of. Um, but it's supposed to be, you know, it's all the things. And I'm sure somebody who knows about this is listening and like rolling their eyes and right. be like another sucker. But I want to try because it it's not supposed to be quite as intense as far as like caffeine. And, does but it, it also, have caffeine? Yes, it does. And it has all of these other medicinal qualities that, uh, you know, who knows if they're lying or not. Um, but let me tell you, can I tell you some of the things that they say? And again, we're not, until they oh, pay for it, John. Oh, oh. Okay, so for the listener, Dave just brought, yeah, up, their brought up their website. Up their site. And um, we have... A couple bags of this stuff. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, we're not going to say it, though. We're not, don't does, say it. They uh, pay for this. Oh, she does this. She has the green bag. Okay. I don't know if that's like mushroom matcha. That's when what I I've see got. green. Yes. Don't say the thing. I'm not. That people pay a ton of money for I'm ad not space talk here, for the rest of the episode. Go um, <laughs> so um, what it says for the coffee is it's keto, paleo-friendly, vegan, non-GMO, no, no sugar, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. So it's got all these... Um, it has health benefits, and I'm going to tell you what they are, John, because you're sitting there going, well, tell me what they are. I'm not actually going to tell you what they are because they're not telling me what they are. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. Maybe this is it. No, it's... But you feel good on it. I don't, yeah, I don't know. This is the first day. This is oh, day this one. this is day this one. This is, yeah, okay. we're, we're at ground zero, so I have no clue. So but, are you doing this in place of coffee, obviously? Well, probably not totally in place. I just, again, it's as much curiosity as it is anything mm-hmm. because they they really, really promote this whole idea that, like, it's it's like having coffee but with health benefits, and so I'm like, well, that sounds like a good, yeah. Um, and and again, they just are like, we're just not going to tell you anything that would help you about. Yeah, they're not forthright with the health yeah, benefits. They're uh, oh, brain health. There you go. That's so. That's one. Thing. Is that just what it says? Brain health. <laughs> that's all it says. I'm not asking questions. I'm, I'm scrolling too fast. Man, I, I think that's great. Any any time yeah. that someone, I mean, I am so addicted to espresso in the morning that I, I, I am sort of fascinated with anyone who is not or anyone who's changing it up and is like, I'm going to try this tea thing in the morning or I'm going to do, you know, lemon water instead of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it's like it's like a heroin addict talking to he th- who he thought was another heroin addict and they're like, I don't know, I'm going to try. I'm not doing heroin today. And I'm like... What do you mean? Your body's going to shut down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is <laughs> like I I was in Denver recently. Do you know that about heroin addicts? Is that something you're just? I assuming? guess I, I'm I'm project- it feels I'm like assuming. Maybe, yeah, it feels like you're. Oh oh oh! You found the I, health I, benefits. Yeah, I'm yeah. Right in the middle of my. Denver I'm so story. sorry. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. No no. Go I ahead. got excited because I didn't think it was going to be found. Well, I was in Denver, but I was going to be um like outside of the city, and I knew that there was going to be one morning where I wasn't going to be able to go into the city and get Oof. some good coffee. Oof. And I know this because it's my number one thing that I think about when I'm ever leaving the house overnight. Other I'm than like, your family. Where am I? No, no, no. Yeah. Like the family, they're going to be fine. Yeah. I need to think about coffee. <laughs> where am I going to? think about you and coffee. <laughs> yeah. And so I actually, my brother and sister-in-law bought me this uh, thing years ago that is a, an espresso machine, but it's, it's like- uh, Travel. A travel thing. So all you all you need is hot water, and it's this little mechanism thing that you like pump it. And I mean, it's like you're sweating by the end of it, and you have to work. For do you like, think that's that? Do you think everybody sweats when they do it, or maybe that's use your air on their part? Maybe just me. That's withdrawals. 
It's the, ex- it's the excitement and the withdrawals yeah. happening all the same time. <laughs> but I was I was at a friend's house, and the the guy we were. We were hanging out. I was hanging out with the, this guy, my friend. This is getting really sketchy, like really quickly. <laughs> I know. The whole point of the story is he doesn't drink coffee. Oh, okay. He's never drank Which coffee sketchy, his whole Which is sketchy, honestly. Life. That's sketchy, too. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. But I am here pumping, sweating, and I, I, you got to pump this thing like 30 times, and you get like half an ounce of espresso. Ooh. And then you have to refill it up with Re-pump more it. grounds, get more hot water. Put the thing back together. That's a lot. Pump it another 30 times. I mean, I, I'm doing this. He's coming in and out of the kitchen, and I'm still <laughs> doing it 15 minutes later. And I'm like, I know you think I'm crazy, but yeah. this is a thousand percent worth it Yeah, for me. The, the, have you thought of it? Because I know, you, you know you're very disciplined about your workout routines. Have you thought about just adding it, just making that a five-minute part, like taking out whatever you, like burpees <laughs> you do that morning, just being like, right. I'm going to do I'll some just do manual espresso. <laughs> Which sounds like a character from like an old book, doesn't it? Manuel Espresso. Manuel, Manuel Espresso. Espresso. Hello, my name is yeah. Manuel Espresso. Like an old, uh, Italian uh, hero. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I've thought about that. But you know what? It only works out the right side. Oh. Because I'm pumping it with my right. And I have thought, I thought the other day in Denver, I'm like, I should switch and do my left just to balance it yeah. out. But I was like, what if it's not as good? I'm not going to do it. And also, I would rather have a lopsided looking <laughs> I was body. I say, that's all we're going to know. Everybody, when you see John in concert next and you wonder, like, why is he so right dominant? You yeah. know, he's. Well, been... you wonder why I, I turn. Yeah. When I'm facing <laughs> so the, I don't yeah, face they, the they crowd. They only see yeah, your right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So those who are just with bated breath waiting for the benefits, they give you four here. It enhances your mood. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. You seem like you're in a It's good reducing mood. stress. I'm not as worried as I was. Okay. Uh, boosts immunity, and I feel great. And it's brain. it just says brain health and memory. Not any specifics, just brain health and memory. Well, memory. Little, yeah, we can. Mm. Can we talk about memory? Well, I'm do. not sure that last. It maybe it hasn't kicked into that fourth category yet. Yeah. Yep. Because before we started recording, listener, yeah. Dave and I were talking about Why did something. you say one listener? Because I want everyone to feel like I'm speaking directly to okay. them. Yeah. And I don't it want feels to get more optimistic on our listeners. Well, it feels base. more pow- powerful if you say listeners. Everybody assumes like, man, there's a lot of them. See, I feel the opposite. Okay. If I'm the listener mm-hmm. and the podcast host, the main podcast host as I'm, <laughs> says <laughs> listeners, I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm just one of many. But if he says listener, listener I'm like, oh, they make this for me. He's talking to me. They make this me. for me. <laughs> anyway, we before we started recording, we ha- we were talking John and, did the old, I need to say, John did the old, don't talk about that. We're going to talk about it. And so okay. here's okay. here is us moving it to now. Because you said, right, we started talking about this right when you walked in the door. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you said, no, no, we got to say this is good stuff. Yeah, because I was talking about something and Dave asked a question about it. And I was like, Dave, we've, we've, we've talked, talked about this. Yeah, we've talked about I've this. told you this. Yeah, yeah. And then we started talking about this whole thing where I was at coffee uh, with a friend of mine the other day and I was asking him questions about his job and I was genuinely mm-hmm. you're into it interested I'm I'm genuinely asking a question that comes to my mind in real time I want to know the answer to this question yeah. yeah and then as he's giving me his answer the shame hits me that I'm like oh, I don't know who this guy is <laughs> I'm at the wrong table <laughs> no I was like dang it I've I've asked you this before. We've had this whole conversation before. And it makes me, I I hate it because I hate it being on his end of it. I hate when someone, I mean, the thing that that happened a few minutes ago. Why are you looking at me so much when you say that? It's not that big of a deal. But you know, when somebody says, asked you a question and you're like, yeah, remember when I told you this like Mm -hmm. a month ago? Mm -hmm. Did that not mean anything? Mm -hmm. I hate that. Yeah. I want to do that less. Yeah, me too. It so. is a, it is a, it is baked so deeply into my DNA. And I really, Annie has helped me a lot with that, but it's just, it is one of my most consistent characteristics is I just don't, I mean, I really mean well, I really do. Yeah. Like I mean for connection to be there, but if I'm not really on my game, I will just pretty much immediately forget conversations I've had. And why do you think that is? I, I, why do you think what is? Hey, I feel like the thing that that hinders 
the information that's coming from my, my buddy Jake, who I was having coffee with. Shout out J.O. J.O. Jake Asley. When he's talking to me, the thing that hinders that information from sticking in my brain is is I'm guessing is like I want this conversation to go well. I want to be thoughtful. I want to think of something which which is good. Yeah. But maybe I need to do that less. Like let, let it be bad, but forget. I mean, <laughs> let it be bad and remember. Yeah. So see the conversation well, goes forget. Bad. <laughs> It's like I need to just let that go. It, it, you know, I feel like Amy is so oh, great at remembering oh, things. Oh it's almost it's savant level. Yeah, and I don't know that she. I think all the things that I'm consciously trying to to be good at in a conversation just come naturally to her. John, <laughs> hey, oh Dave. my goodness, yeah, yeah. So can I- <laughs> that's why we don't have any money. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I was going to loan you some, but I don't either, honestly. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Please. What are some events in which you think you could win a gold medal? A go- okay, I thought you were going to say silver, but gold? Um, I'm pretty good at tennis, mm-hmm. if I may say. Mm-hmm. I make a mean oh, I cheesecake. Know that. I, I don't know if that. that's a sh- sanctioned uh, or, a sh- yet. Or, a sh- or sanctioned. <laughs> <laughs> are you Sean Connery, by the way? <laughs> I'm excellent at parallel parking, yep, I will say. True. Yep. But probably my best chance at uh, at getting the gold would be eating the most pumpkin spice cookies with maple frosting that my mother in law make oh. makes at uh, Thanksgiving. Oh. I could crush that. Listen, I, I'm going to say I, I I like your chances in all those, John. Thank you. But do you know who can really help you capture the gold? Oh, what's that sound, Dave? Could that be Shopify? Oh, of course. <laughs> or as Connery would say, of course. Of course. Because Shopify makes you a winner in every event. Do you know how Sean Connery would say Shopify? How? Shopify. Oh, that's right, Dave. Shopify grows with your business no matter how far or big you grow. Thanks to the endless list of integrations and third-party apps, anything you can think of from on-demand printing to accounting to chatbots, mm. everything you need to revolutionize your business. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn and, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. That's right. Plus, Dave, I'm surprised you left this part out. Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow grow with shopify plus plus this is not i'm not going to leave this out sign up for a one dollar per month trial period at shopify.com slash dadville all All lowercase go go to well just let me finish okay go to shopify.com slash dadville now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in or in our case what stage you're on on shop you got to do it when i say okay shopify.com slash dadville You better knock around. You know, do you know that song? <laughs> you better, you know, hold on to something then, or you'll get knocked around. around. That's I was actually Sorry. referring to an old 60s song. Oh, Whether yeah. you like gold, uh-huh. silver, or bronze. Silver. <laughs> knock around has the sunglasses you need to enjoy the summer games, road trips, and all your outdoor activities in between. They've been making high-quality shades that don't break the bank since 2005, and they've actually been our personal go to for years. That's right, and with over 25 different frame styles. Think about that. That's 25 different frame styles. I don't styles. have 25 different faces. Right? <laughs> There's something for the whole family, including tons of kids' pairs. So whether you're looking to rock some red, white, and blues for Team USA mm. or a timeless pair... For your backyard barbecue, Knock Around has you covered. All their lenses have UV 400 protection, and with polarized adult pairs starting at 28 bucks, you can get a few pairs to leave in your car, toss in your beach bag, or lend to a friend in need. Now, Dave, I just bought a new pair of Campagnons. Oh, nice. Rainbow on black, Dave. Featuring mm. their new Noctera performance lens tech and rubberized adjustable nose grips. John, those are amazing. They Thank make you. you look like you're from the 80s and the future all at the same time, which would yeah. have been... Back to the future. There it is. Thank there you. we go. Thank I you. knew you'd like them, Dave. Dadville fans, don't squint through the summer's festivities. Check out knockaround.com and use code DADVILLE15 for 15% off your order. That's Dadville15 for 15% off your order at knockaround.com. Do you you know, so so I have this theory, and um, 
I, I just wonder, I wonder if there's something about men and not every man, not, yep. So not every, man. not every man. <laughs> um, but I think there is something about like with me, let's just do that. That I think if it's not something that is going to attribute, that is going to contribute to my survival or yeah. need, yeah, it's great to know, but not really onboarded. Where I think with Annie, she just remember. It's like she sees that as a, she's like, I need to remember that, and she'll remember. Yeah, I mean, my mom, my mom remembers social security numbers to my kindergarten friends. I mean, literally, she is like, I will mention someone I met at a camp when I was in third grade. Yeah. And she'll be like, oh my, was he from Madison, Mississippi? I'm like, yes. And she's like, his mom was the dentist. And yeah. I'm like, how do you do this? So I think, I just, I do wonder if there's something in the way that, and I, this is a broad stroke, but that men and women's brains are made up is that we're so sort of caveman and survival. It's like, mm-hmm. that's great information, but it's not going to keep the family alive. Whereas women, it feels like, no, this is for my interconnected communal brain. This is, this is like currency. I need to know this stuff. I. This is I what I deal I, in. I think I agree. I really do. I mean, I, I, I think it's survival on both sides. That's like for Amy, perfectly said. I we should end that. Like, you just, you, that was okay, there we go. And so shout out to Methodical <laughs> Coffee. You guys check out our website. Just kidding. I don't think we have one. But I, yeah, I think, I think yeah. you're right. And I'm always hesitant to speak real broadly, yeah, yeah. especially when it comes to like stereotypical gender roles and all that kind of stuff. But I do think there's something to it. Yeah. I think with aim, like here's, here's an example, a group text. If I'm on a group text with my wife and it has to do with our social calendar or whatever, I will, unless somebody's yeah. speaking yeah, yeah. directly yeah, to me, yeah, yeah. I, I ignore it. Yeah. And this, this bit me the other day because I didn't realize I sort of double booked myself because I didn't, I didn't read this group text that my wife and I were both on and I was late to something that I was supposed to be at. Anyway, but for her, I think the group text thing, she's like, well, this is our life. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This yeah. is part yeah. of our, yeah. you know, quote unquote survival or whatever. So yeah, I, I, I think you're right. But I don't, I want to correct. I want to be better at it because the, the, the hard truth is, and I know that if, you know, it would go either way. Like if I forgot something that you had told me, we'd already had this conversation. Mm -hmm. I know, you know that I love you and I mean well, Mm -hmm. and I want to remember and I am concerned with whatever it is. But even knowing that it's still going to hurt you a little bit. Yeah. It always does. Yeah. Forget. Yeah. So I want to, I want to be better. at. We, a lot of us do. We're on another group text that I pay attention to talking about this, (laughs) this exact thing. Um, so, I mean, g- g- catch us up, Johnny. What you been up to? Let's I feel g- like I've been me, talking give me a lot. The I, want, I want you to catch okay, us up. Okay, I will. Up. So, I've, you know, I've been, no. Um, you know, I just did a little show in Charleston. Great show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell it me about that. It was a great that. show. It was so much fun. Anybody listen to this that it was in that Charleston crowd, about 3,000 people. It was so, everybody was so, like, uh, you know crowds when you get up and you, like, two nanoseconds in you're like yeah. oh oh it's like this tonight yes, yes. they were in now i don't know why but i i never play in charleston they yelled that the whole time yeah. i told you this but i told a story of yours accredit it to you don't worry i yeah. mean that was all the proper notation and as you should but I mean, it is one of my best this stories. crowd knows this story i should play in charleston just to tell the story bro because i have that story as i was telling you i was like john should be here doing this but, you know, did that. We, we've got some shows. By now, I will have played it, but I've got a Denver show coming up. We have a run in the Midwest uh-huh. um, at the end of August. So it's been good. But it's been really, the shows have been really fun. It's been good. like Ransom is out with me and old Phil Potts doing some tour management. Mm-hmm. Steve Mokler, Smokes, as we call him. Is that Smokes. opening? Um, it's been good. It's been really good. There's There's nothing like having a great show. Oh, my gosh. It's so great. Yes. Uh, and I think, you know, I mean, it's weird, the discipline I think you and I and all of us have to have to do that. I know that sounds crazy to listeners because it's like, you know, I think it's easy to think, well, you just get up there and play. But it's there's so many things that are happening. One, just how your day has been going or what you're already thinking about. Mm-hmm. But two, you know, the show, just like, what's the crowd like? Are they loud? Are they chill? Are they, are they like super responsive? Are they, you know, fun? Are yeah. they respectful? Are they, you know, whatever? And so... Um, 
it's just fun when you get like some really great crowds where you're like, man, this is, yeah, you know, and you and I, I mean, uh, something, you know, that we asked, I think we talked about with, um, who do we ask that to recently on the show about, um, or no, was it just in about when, you know, the crowd like, Oh, Cody. Oh yeah. Cody. About Cody. like, you know, when, when do you feel like the show has started or when do you feel like, what does it take you to get settled in? And I mm-hmm. think both of us have always said when people laugh the first time. Yeah. And so, you know, I think which it's tricky with crowds. I I have to remind myself that, you know, like your crowd in Charleston the other night. I I can imagine. You know, you said the energy was just really great. Yeah, it's great. For for me, Salt Lake City. Every time I go to Salt Lake City, really, there is something about Salt Lake City. Or the last time I played in Seattle is a great example. Just the crowd was mm-hmm. so great. But it, it, there are some. You know, like every crowd has its own yeah. personality. And not every, like the the behavior of the crowd, is not necessarily. It's a bad indicator. Like say the crowd that you didn't like so much. Just say say the city because you've been talking about it so much. It was a small uh, village off the coast of Malta. <laughs> oh, that, okay. They were just hard to read. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them weren't there. <laughs> so that's even a hard. Like, what harder. are they doing? Yeah, you're just having to guess. <laughs> Are they enjoying it? They're not even here. But I have to remind myself that it's not, you know, like, this happened a million times, I'm sure, to both of us, where, like, you can, you know, you can often only see part of the crowd. Yeah. Often it's only the first two yeah. rows, maybe. Yeah. And you'll see that, one, you know, that guy or girl that just looks checked out. Oh, yeah. That, that, that you're like, you you always you find the here? one. Usually it's the husband. Yeah, but then you'll you'll... Maybe meet them after the show. Yeah, and, he's and they are stoked. Yeah, and they've bought all your merch, and you're like, "Dude, you have the worst show face." Show face, and I have to remind myself that's that's me when I go to shows. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm never I, I'm low energy. I I want to like, if I could lay down and watch a show, and just have my eyes barely open, I'll enjoy the whole show. Yeah, but I'm not giving anything. To the artist, mm-hmm. you know. So, but I'm so glad that that show was great. It's great, yeah. Enjoy we got those. It was just in North Carolina with the fan, the extended Barnes fan. That was fun. So, since, like you said, the Denver show will have already happened by the time this comes out, how do you think the Denver show went? Amazing. No joke. Denver is always so fun. They're, they're really? like, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, cities like you go, yeah. oh, yeah, no, we're locked in. I don't yeah. have to worry about this. Genuinely, Denver is always one of those for me. What's the one thing that you would have gone back and changed about the Denver show that hasn't happened yet, but by this time will yeah, yeah, have yeah. happened? Yeah, I, I, I forgot one of the songs. Uh, I think I think I'd moved Little Lies. Yeah. And I just totally <laughs> forgot where it was. We, I will say it was funny. We did the Charleston show, and it had been like a month and a half since we did our last one. And Dustin, two different times, got up and went to guitar and it was like, no, it's not that time yet. Two different times. It was, just, mm-hmm. of course I love that. Of course, right. you know, it's That's just great. more fodder, but it was hysterical. Like yeah. I turned and he just wasn't at the piano and I turned and he's, I'm like, no, no, it's not. He's like, Oh, sorry. It was just, it was like, <laughs> that's his own fault for being good at multiple i mean that it is his fault if you didn't yeah. play everything you wouldn't have to get up and you wouldn't move. have to walk to other instruments so annoying i'm never walking to other instruments because I'm, I'm just playing the one yeah, yeah you know you're barely walking to that one barely barely yeah so have you you've been you've been doing the shows did you wrap up it's wrapped uh it's not that's in, unless somebody is listening to this in october <laughs> so for the, i just did what we talked yeah. about at the beginning. Yeah. I can't. I, I have told you this so many times, Dave. I have more shows in September. Um, but you know the way that I'm doing. Well, we're kind of doing it the same way. Like I'm doing a bunch of shows, or like you know, yeah, half dozen, eight shows, and then taking like a month or two yeah. off, and then doing it again, which has been really, really great. Yeah. Um, but the last, yeah, I, I did my last kind of run of shows in june and i've had a couple little one-offs uh here and there which has been i think especially for the summer for me is that's the way i have to do it yeah i think this rhythm is is really really great you know well and the thing about rhythm is if it's not great it's going to get you and so you'd rather it be great than it getting it is going to get you yes yeah i mean i don't even think that that's part of i think it's just the rhythm is going to get you. Yeah, it's just, you can try to find that balance, that work-life balance. But, yeah. 
the rhythm will get you. It, it always way. does. Because I feel like in the summer, I mean, I was talking to my brother about this the other day. Like, it's always I'm always trying to to balance. Like, I need to feel like I've been productive just for my own sanity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm also like the the girls are going to be back in school in like two and a half yeah. weeks. So when it's like a really nice day and they're going to the pool or Amy wants to go to lunch or whatever, I'm like, I should go do that. It's just a tricky balance. I don't know. Yeah. And I feel, I don't know. I, I always have that um, assumption in my mind that all my other friends, you included, I'm like, they're probably working. They're probably like putting the finishing touches on a freaking hit song but i'm gonna go to the pool that's why i ride on my porch so much yeah and you shout <laughs> well the, it's hard setting up the pa but like it's always worth it just because i'll see your saw your head poke out of the window and i'm like yeah got him yeah got him you got me going to the pool again <laughs> no <laughs> no you know i i um i will say this though there there's something that i realized after the last, because, you know, between shows and, and summer, you know, I kind of wrote this first batch of songs for the next record, sort of, you know, first whatever, four or five months of the year, you know, I'm working on it. And I just didn't write for like a month. I had some co-writes, writing for other people, whatever. And I got back to those songs, and I'm always like, I should do this more. This like, Taking like total, off. yeah, like yeah. mental ginger, you know, get back to it and go, oh, man. I like that a lot more than I thought or like, mm-hmm. Oh, that's not as good. Or man, that bridge needs to be better or whatever. Yeah. But it's so helpful and it's, yeah. and it's fun. It's like, I, I come back with a real sense of like, Oh, what's in there? Or I'll just forget something. I'm like, Oh, that's well, cool. I forgot. I did. Yeah. That. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I forget to do music sometimes. <laughs> like this is a nice room. What are all these instruments? No, I, that is true. I mean, this last, uh, June and then also in May, these new songs that I've been working on, I have, I have, purposefully not put the like uh Finish demos oh, oh. in the in my dropbox yeah so when i'm yeah. on the road yeah, i yeah, can't yeah, yeah. even listen to them so i know i'm at least going to have a built-in like maybe like 10 days where i'm i'm not listening to them and it is great it's kind of it's kind of a risk because when you come back you you hope that you're more excited mm-hmm. about the stuff but sometimes there are those songs where you're like yeah oh, i really thought this was good yeah no it's, not it's really i mean i'd say that one because it you know just to encourage you like me they're like it's okay in summer to like take a minute and yeah. let him breathe but i think too it's really helpful it's like really really helpful i think yeah. i come back and have much more succinct thoughts about things than in the middle where you're just like cranking out tunes you yeah. know and you're kind of like maybe your editing meter is not you know quite where it should be mm-hmm. i think time is really helpful to kind of come back and go like Exactly, you said. Oh, that's great, or, mm, or you know, yeah. whatever it is. I've found that I have started getting up earlier and earlier and earlier. I think partially it's fueled by this thing, this like need to kind of balance being productive and also like having fun family time. So if I can, by the time the girls are up, if I've already done a mm-hmm. couple things. Mm-hmm. Then I feel like the pressure is off a little bit, uh-huh. you know. And it, you know, it works. And then I'm so exhausted at night. Yeah, you go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, we just both sounded like we were 95 years old in that little two minute window. <laughs> Can I tell you something that I saw lately that I, I just have to? We have to talk about this. There's a show on Disney Plus called Camden. Do you know about the show? No. It's a docu series. Um, made by um, Dua Lipa about Camden in London. So you know, okay. have, you, have you ever been there? You, I've sure. Been to yeah. Well, you've been. Have you ever been to Camden? That I like don't know. kind of neighborhood. Really, really bohemian. Um, I don't know how many blocks it is. It's not many, um, but it's like spray paint everywhere and thrift stores and uh, tons of venues and pubs and. Okay. It's kind of. It's like a. But it's very. Uh, uh, it's like you know. It's this long and it stops. It's like all the neighborhoods in London where it's kind of like you immediately know when you're out of it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like because it's very, very okay, artsy, I feel like I have been. Punk rock. I feel like I bought a pair of knockoff 
Doc Martens. There that that sounds right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I guess Dua spent a summer of her life growing up there between there and um, where is she from? She's from a, like a... It's a village um, just off the coast of Malta. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> It's funny she's got more of a fan base there than you do. I know that really is. She kind of edged me out. Um, so anyway, so, so so she it's I think it's four episodes, and you know you see the thing, and it looks it's cool. It's like basically so much music came out of there because there's all these bars and pubs that are like small, but were like these birthing grounds for these massive bands, these English bands. Mm-hmm. So like the first episode is about Amy Winehouse, Dua Lipa, Coldplay. Um, and this, uh, oh shoot, what's the name of that band? Um, Madness. And then there was a ska band and like the, anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, and then episode two is Oasis and, um, the, uh, Libertines and some of these bands. Anyway, it's just really cool. But that first episode, and I was really enjoying it. I love any music documentary. It could yeah. pretty much be about anybody. Yeah. But something about the Coldplay part of it, like, was so, it, like, reverberated in my soul so significantly. And I think, and I've been thinking about, one, I wonder why. So, basically, you know, they talk about Amy, and that's, you know, Winehouse, which is really fascinating. Dua Lipa kind of talks about her growing up there, which is cool. But the Coldplay thing, it was just, like, there's so much footage, which is compelling because it shows yeah. like you know chris talks about how he grew up in the countryside of england moves to london i think the first place that he moves into is camden so he's like in that little neighborhood yeah um you know his buddies they put start this band it even has footage of the first show where the drum set that the opener they took their bass drum with him so will i think the drummer had to stomp on the floor and they mic the floor uh-huh. but there's footage of it so yeah. you really see like this little ba- like these guys you know yeah. and chris is talking about like you know, he was like, it was just like, we went to every show, saw all the bands we wanted to be. And you know how they kind of graduate through these things. And then it talks about, and it has them playing like Shiver, which is cool. Yeah. Cause you're like, oh yeah, that's cool. Like seeing these guys, they probably wrote it two days before or something, yeah. you know. But then, um, and I think this is what was so compelling about it. And I, I've thought about this for like the last couple of weeks. Like you see the A&R guys come. And so they interview one of the A&R guys and he's like, and Chris makes this joke about like how they he knew who they were and they were coming because they all looked the same and they all came together and they literally all had the same outfits, uh-huh. you, you know. And um, and this guy, this A and R guy, is like, you know, I, we didn't say he, he worked for Sony, I think, and he's like, you know, I saw just didn't I just didn't think they had the songs yet, and so I didn't sign them. And he said, and then you know, fast forward like six months later, my wife and I were driving somewhere on vacation, or as they would say, holiday, and he said, Yellow came on, and he's like, we pulled the car over. And we just sat in silence. And when the song went over, he was like, well, you know, curse word. Like, yeah. I just missed it. And I think what was so, it just like, and I wonder, and I'm bringing it up because I wonder if, if this resonates with you. I mean, you, you watching it, I'm so excited to see what you say about it. But I think a couple of things. One, it just reminded me of like early days of my career where it was like, so much energy. You know, you're going into these places, you're playing for 50 people. Yeah. Next time you go, there's 75. Mm-hmm. You know, you're out on the sidewalk, everybody's talking to each other, you know, you're meeting all these people. And it's, and you just see your crowd growing every time, like exponentially. You know, you're writing these, you're playing a new song that you wrote the night before. The crowd loves it, they don't like it, whatever. But then, like, I think, so that was really reminiscent for me. I just yeah. was like, God, I, I miss that. I think, too. I got sad because I was like, that's just not as much a thing anymore. Like, that's how you got discovered. You know, it's crazy to think that this band who had going to be a global, global success, yeah. people had to find them. You know, you go to them to find them. It wasn't yeah. on social media where it's sit and wait. You know, you just hit, no, oh, that's a band. I've never heard these guys. Cool. I'll go listen right. to them. Yeah. So it was just that organic thing. But I think the thing that really had me reeling so much was that – you see these four guys and everything that they need in their artistic career is there. It's the four of them. And they're, those four people are going to make so much amazing music and going to do so many things. And yet you have footage of these guys playing over and over in these like a hundred person bars. Mm-hmm. And you just think, isn't that unbelievably cool? I mean, like, and then I thought about yellow and I was like, what a cool moment for a band like that. That you know, you have shivering cool songs. Like everybody's no yeah. doubt they're cool, you yeah. know, like but when you but then 
you know, you write the song that everybody yeah. goes, that's it, you mm-hmm. know, and just, and then I heard that song and I haven't heard that song in a while. And it just was like, oh my gosh, I remember so many things. That was the first year I graduated MTSU, moved to Nashville and Jeremy Cowder, dear friend of mine, was already living here with his wife, Shannon and me and Mike and a bunch of us always hang out with them. And Cowder was obsessed with Cold Place. So we always had them. And then I remember the first time hearing Yellow and, you know, ripping it onto a CD and having it in my car and. And it was just like so many, I don't know, it was just this crazy amount of things I felt watching that. One, thinking about my career, the beginnings of that, how fun that was, the energy of rooms like that, that is so, so fun. Mm -hmm. Also realizing like, isn't it cool to see this thing that would become a phenomenon, start as these four just kind of geeky little English guys on the stage. Yeah. And then somebody took a chance, they write a hit, and then it's just, see ya. I mean, it's off to the races, you know, the rest is history. John, John, Dave, John, I, am sh- I didn't know it was going to be you. Hey, now that yeah. you're here, can oh, yeah. I ask so, you a question? Mm-hmm. This is my bathroom, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually here. Yeah, no, no, no I know. Especially oh. lately, we don't need to get into that. Yeah. But hey, <laughs> do you know what the best part of my day is? <laughs> is it, John? Uh, of course I do. It's the moment you see me coming outside, taking that first breath of summer air uh-huh. looking uh-huh. the day in the eyes and uh-huh. me yelling into the wind not today not today but yeah. after that it's the moment you first smell the chocolatey brown sugary aroma of your first cup of methodical coffee that's exactly right Dave both of those mm-hmm. but mainly the second one okay methodical that's coffee is my favorite you tell me that you tell me that every and I day. agree with you it has craft coffee mm-hmm. and tea uh-huh. for people of all kinds, all kinds. roasted mm-hmm. blended yep. brewed served and perfected yep. by verified coffee and tea aficionados like myself just like Dave. you john and methodical has resolved the headache of having too little or too much coffee from your traditional time-based coffee subscription with methodical you can subscribe by usage now also dave let me tell the people this because okay. this is very exciting you can receive a free smart scale that tracks your coffee consumption and triggers your next order right at the perfect time. So you always have just the right amount of coffee on hand, worry-free. You know what the best part is, John? Tell him. You can receive 20% off your first bag and 10% no. off subsequent bags. How are they even <laughs> making money? Well, let me finish. There's no Sorry. code needed when you try the free smart scale. Dave, as you know, I do know. Okay, we also have our very own Dadville, Dadville blend. blend. That's right. It's filled with hints of, I'd say, chocolate. Corn. Graham. Graham. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. And I'll tell you what, it gets what? me going every morning. It does. Methodical is on a mission to connect people to the beauty of life through coffee experiences for people like you, listener. And you, John. Thank and you. me, even. Uh-huh. Methodical has been roasting and hosting, getting their roast and host on since 2015. Insane. You know, on their site, you'll also find brew guides that'll teach you how to turn your coffee brewing chore, it's never a chore, yeah. into a beloved ritual. That's right. It's always a beloved ritual. Yeah, yeah. Receive 20% off your first bag and 10% off all subsequent bags. No code needed. Hey, everybody. Craft a cup you'll love with, with a methodical, methodical coffee. coffee. You went a little faster than I Sorry. Told you. John. Dave. Hello, John. Oh, <laughs> that is really funny. I need to explain to the listener okay. why that's hilarious. Okay. Because this is, we're talking about Hello Bello here. Oh, yes. Right? Now, listen, they say it takes a village to raise a baby, mm. which is why delegation is key. Yes, sir. Okay. So, why not delegate the task of securing diapers, wipes, and more to Hello Bello? That's right. I think it's a great move, John. Also, sidebar. Yeah. It takes a baby to raise a village, too. And that's R A Z E. But I'm going to digress. Hello Bello believes all families deserve premium, affordable baby products. And with their ultra-convenient diaper bundle subscription, Mm -hmm. which includes seven packs of diapers and four packs of plant-based wipes, you'll never run out of supplies, even when your baby's got the runs. Come on now. Named Best Diaper Subscription by New York Magazine and winner of the 2022 Good Housekeeping Parenting Award. I'm so excited I can barely read it. Hello Bello will keep you stocked on diapers and wipes. That's right, John. And what if I was going to tell you this, John? <laughs> okay. okay. Same. What if I told you I was the type of person who said I would only get a subscription to Hello Bello mm-hmm. if it was shipped in an upcycled box that conveniently turned into a play toy for my baby? Well, Dave, I'd say you better pull up HelloBello.com <laughs> because that's exactly that's how right. your Hello Bello subscription arrives each month. Amazing. I love it. Tell me how to 
this on. I was going to before you interrupted oh, me there. Now go to hellobello.com slash dadville to get 30% off. You heard me right. 30% off your first customized bundle and a full-size freebie product of your choice. That's right, guys. That's right. That's how much they love you. That's hellobello.com slash dadville to start bundling with 30% off your first order. And don't forget, that's hellobello.com slash dadville. I feel like Coldplay, I don't know the story on this, but they have, they seem to have footage of every yeah, moment yeah, yeah. from the very beginning. It does seem that way, yeah. And I don't know, I don't know what the story is on that. I know, I don't either. Because they had that, there's that, is it on Amazon Prime? Or, I think it's Amazon Prime, but it's like, is it Sky Full of Stars? I think is their documentary. And I mean, it goes back to, I mean, yeah. early, it's, it's the same foot. a lot of it is actually the same footage. But I mean, like you said, it's like, they're very well documented, which yeah. I'm like, whoever... You know, did that so really cool. thought about that? Yeah, whoever did that. When you were talking about that, I, I thought of Jordy Cersei. Yeah, um, I, you know, I think you and I went to one of his shows mm-hmm. over at Basement yeah. East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely a different world now, but I do feel like when you were saying, like, you know, it's, everything. If you wanted to see that band at that time, you had to go find mm-hmm. them, all that kind of stuff. I, I, Jordy gives me hope that that scene i'm like oh it's still kind of it's still there it looks different now i suppose i don't know but it th- that sort of energy well you know you know what there. i think of and, and and you'll remember this we talk about this all the time oh, i hope you remember it um when we went to see when i went to see i remember this so vividly i went to go see gabe dixon band yeah at, you're say at the um ru- uh no the um settler uh-huh and it was that feeling for me. Like I, I kind of knew their music because because I got hip to. I think maybe you had hit me to on a rolling ball, uh-huh. and I was like, "This is cool." But you know, real. I mean, it's like so fun and artsy and weird that record. You know, it's just so like good. Gabe and the guys flexing all their super musical. You know, Miami University yeah. jazz program muscles. You know, it's yeah. like million key change, whatever. That show at the at the Sutler was the three of them on this tiny stage in this small room, packed house, playing all these new songs that he had been writing with Dan Wilson and much more, <sighs> much more like poppy, succinct. Yeah. You know, you could tell that they, he, had, he had moved his North Star a little bit toward the masses. And I mean, just sitting in that room, just like humming with excitement and every single song was like, what is that song? And you couldn't get them. Like they weren't right. out there. Yeah, it's just like yeah, this is new stuff. And yeah, I remember so afterwards, good. like waiting until everybody had left, and I just was like, "Hey, Cave, like my name's Dan. I'm mean, just man. This is incredible. Like, oh my god, we should hang out or something." And he was kind of like, "All right, cool. Would you stop licking my face?" And so, you know, but that feeling where you, you know, it's like I wanted to walk out into the street, into you know Eighth Avenue with a bullhorn and be like, "People." You have to go listen yeah. to the Cape Dixon man. But like no one like I got to experience something in mm-hmm. that moment yeah. that 120 people, 100 people got to experience and nobody else. Yeah. And we knew something nobody else did. Yeah. It's just like I, I you know, and I'm not going to sit here and like lament current times that's not the point of this, but just to say I just it's those feelings and it still does happen. Look, somebody's going to play tonight across every major city in America that nobody knows and is really good. Like, some, you know what I mean? It's not that that's not happening. Right. But does it happen, like you and I are both in our 40s, does it happen to us anymore? You know what I mean? Hmm. I mean, like I, I have moments where often when I'm mowing the lawn, I will put on just Spotify, yeah. whatever, yeah, some yeah. playlist, and yeah. I'm listening to all me- new music that yeah. I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah. And every now and then, I will I will stop and be like, Who "Yeah, that's is cool. This? Yeah, yeah." But and you're like bad company. Who are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I feel like I don't know that like my chemical makeup like explodes like it used to. Yeah, in my twenties yeah. anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like back in my twenties. I mean, as you're talking about Gabe Dixon band, I mean. I remember the moment when I heard them for the first time. I remember like a couple of those shows, like coming down here uh, to Third and Lindsley mm. and seeing him. Go, so driving good. to like a dive bar so in like good. 
outside of Louisville. So good. It was just mind blowing. But now it's like I, I hear a song that I'm like, who is that? I yeah. love this song. But I'm not driving. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They're playing at a place that's like two yeah. hours away. Yeah. That's, I'm not even looking to see where they're yeah. playing. Yeah. Well, I'm you know, you know, I'm putting you, it on a playlist. He, here's, again, I'm going to date myself here, but like, I, I think, you know, gosh, I hope this is interesting to people who are listening, but I think when we were coming up, live the live part of your career had to be good it was a huge part of it like yeah shows were were as much of the recorded experience or part of your career if not more mm-hmm. because like once people bought it that was a one-time experience you had to go provide new ways for people to see you and for you to make money and so you know you were kind of only as good as you were live yeah. For 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 I mean definitely the years decades before us you and I for the most part but even with us it was like you know you 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 needed to be able to put on a show that was like and you were going to go play like if you made a record you were darn sure going to go tour it yeah and so it had to be you had to be good at it you had to yeah. be able to get up and put on a show and so I think there was a compulsion there from me and you when you heard something it was like I got to go see this because yeah. you kind of knew they're probably going to bring the heat. Because it was just like what we did, you know, and so I think now because that that I just don't know that that's as much a thing. I think when people can make music in their homes and never leave. I mean, think about Ryan was sleeping at last. It's like, you know, we yeah. joked. He just didn't really play out because he didesn't have to. And right. so it makes for an interesting experience musically because you don't know if they're going to be good. Like you could show up and it's like this is not great. Right. This is like, right. this person is on their third album and this is just not good because they're not flexing those muscles or they don't have to. Yeah. They're like, I don't, you know, I make enough money just on Spotify to never leave the house. And so I think that's, I think some of what you are saying is what I felt watching that Coldplay thing. It's just like that thing where you are in a room and you hear this band and you're like, I don't know any of these songs, and there's so, and I'm trying to remember like, okay, the third one, remember the name of that song because you got to go find it, or yeah, yeah, you know, like, okay, yeah. okay, that was that one, and then there was one, you know, and then you know, you're trying to take your friend the next day. They had this one that was like, oh shoot, was it was like, dra- was it dragons? It was, it was like a, uh, you know, it's yeah. like you, you know, because you because it was like I don't know when I'll hear right. that. Shazam was just your group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon, right? What is that? <laughs> what was, Dragon, what, was the one, what was the one that they did? But I think it just—it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy how much I felt like I just—I was like mildly euphoric for like a couple of hours yeah. one night after watching it because I just couldn't shake this like return to something in me of like mm-hmm. oh I remember that like mm-hmm. and even like just Nashville like you know. um I've actually got a song called 23 about that on Golden Dates. But it's like, oh, I just remember so vividly friends going to check out something new. And we would all go to Exit Inn or somewhere. And you were like, I don't know. I've heard it's cool. Or, you know, yeah. or, or you did a show. And, you know, that one of my favorite moments in my career, and, and this shout out to Ron Bryce at Third and Lindsley, um, who I feel like I owe him my Nashville listeners. But, you know, there was just a summer where I remember he said, look, here's, and this is like, I don't even know what year this would have been, but like early days, um, maybe like Brother Bring the Sundays. He was like, look, we're going to, you'll play once a month here this summer. And he's like, I promise you by then you'll sell it out. And, you know, first show we had like half full maybe. And mm-hmm. by the end of the summer it was sold out. And oh, it was just great. like, you know, those things, like yeah. the energy when you find out like it's sold out, you're like, uh-uh. Yeah. And then, you know, you're getting on, st- and it's just, God, it was so much fun. You I know, gotta, I got to watch this documentary. It's really cool. And I think too, and like I said before, just knowing this band, while they're so geeky and stringy English fellows uh-huh. and just want to play music, it's like, man, if I could time travel back and get like, guys, you just buckle up. You are about to go on a rocket to the moon. They probably, at least Chris Martin would have been like, no, 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 I know. No, no, I mean, that their yeah, documentary, he says that. He's like, yeah. we'll be the biggest man in whatever he says, three years, and then they beat it by like a year yeah. and a half. But, you know, and I think too, just the magic of knowing, you know, Yellow was sitting in his heart or head or the ether mm-hmm. around him. It just hadn't been written yet. And it would, you know, and that's going to change their lives. Yeah. And, that stuff is just so magically cool because, and this, sorry, this is where I'm laying a plane. It's not manufactured. That's yeah. that. That's what I'm trying to. I haven't communicated well. <laughs> You're watching something that is absolutely organic, yeah. and I think that's that's probably the better way to enunciate it. Is he's not sitting down with pro writers, 
They don't have a pro producer coming in who's like, it's just, it's the most pure version of that thing. And yeah. that's, that's what I left with is like, gosh, that's so inspiring. Like, yeah. you know, they didn't connect with a producer who's been, we've been kind of writing and I've been hooking up with some other guys who've had some hits and they're helping me write songs. And that's fine. Right. But that is just those dudes. They're just like, whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen in this little foursome. Mm-hmm. And, and man, did it work. <laughs> yeah, it is inspiring just hearing you talk about it. Like, I got to, I do feel like I am reconnecting with that part of myself. Yeah. On the, with these new songs that I'm writing. This is not like a pitch for my new album. I don't, but it does, I, I do feel like the gap between, like when, when we were in our 20s, whatever new song we had written, yeah. there, there is no gap between like yeah. me and the euphoria yeah. of hearing the song. Yeah. Um, but I, I do feel like lately in the last like maybe year, year and a half, I do feel like I'm getting closer to that. And I, I don't exactly know why, but it, but it feels, yeah. it, it used to feel like uh, it was a complicated road back to that mm. spot. I couldn't figure out how to get back to it yeah and now for whatever reason i i I really feel like it's just the the joy of music Mm. is a little more uh, readily available yeah you know it takes a weird amount of like work to get there you know it's like i think i'm always surprised at how much it's like you have to shed some things to really be able to to write in that space or to make music in that space as opposed to you know one thing i was going to say that i do think is fun every night and this is kind of like a weird guilty pleasure thing but so the yin to the young performers figuring out their thing that the end of that yang to me is like you know how every now and then you'll do a show or something or like let's say it's a a private event or it's a round or something and there's people who haven't heard you like have just Mm -hmm. not heard anything yeah which is really hard for you and i but you'll find those people especially malta like you know that is i i get this weird sense of satisfaction because i'm like when somebody's like good gracious man like what like do you have r- records? I'm like, yeah, like a lot of them, you know? Mm-hmm. And Because you're like, I've done this for a long... Like, so there's the Coldplay beginning thing. Uh-huh. But then there's those moments where like, for whatever reason, I'll be somewhere playing something and, you know, you play a song and p- you can just tell people like, wow, mm-hmm. like you're really good at this, mm-hmm. you know? And just that feeling of like, yeah, like I've done this. So it's, I, it's, 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 ha- it's that rare moment when you get to see Discovery again which doesn't yeah. happen as much at our age with our crowds. Cause you know, they're coming right. cause they know you, but whatever that venue is that you play a song for people who don't know, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I feel like I'm 21 again, yeah, but I'm yeah. much better than I was when I was 21. <laughs> yeah, the irony. I'm a better, I'm a better representation of myself. And then seeing those people go, man, like you can really, this is, and I'm like, well, I mean, this is what, you know, this is what I do, but it's fun. Yeah. It's all, it almost feels like I'm getting a time travel back, but just mm-hmm. it, my skill set now. Yeah, you know, instead yeah. of being the kid who's singing all over the place and doesn't, you know, what nervous and whatever, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, this is. It's fun to still. Pl- it's fun to play for people who don't know what I do, but just a much better version of me doing that. Yeah, than the beginning me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes me makes me want to go back to our early podcast days. No, no, no. no you know no, what I mean? No, 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 no. When we, I don't know that there'd be much just... of a difference. Honestly, it'd probably be pretty simple. Oh my gosh, I think it would be different. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to listen to myself on a podcast ever, but. I feel like, at least in my head, what's going on, the racket in my head, how yeah. noisy it is up there, yeah. it's way different. Yeah. From those really? first couple interviews, oh my gosh, to now, way different. I do, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to whatever sound, whatever. I don't know that I, I mean, I don't know you if feel I feel the can, same? Yeah. I'm like, I think I've maybe gotten better at a couple things, but I don't know that I have some seismic shift in how I'm functioning. And maybe it wouldn't, if someone were listening, scary they would be like, John, you sound, it sounds the same. <laughs> so but in my head, I think it's, it's just way quieter up here. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm that's way good. less yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, I, in my head. I think I, I, yeah, no, I can't agree with that. Mine is just as noisy. It's just a junior high <laughs> band trying to play a Sousa March to zero effect. Um, so before we sign off, I just want to give you a chance. To forgive you. <laughs> mm for those for those people I can't say this trivia. For those people who are listening in Malta. Yeah. Just as a what's the well, final to, again to be clear, it's a village off, off the, the coast, coast. Of, okay. of Malta. So I don't want to Yeah, let's don't Malta do that. But just this, for them, what would you I just want to say thank you. Uh Beverly, you oh. were front row front and center 
Sweet Bev. And also ran the merch table. Mm-hmm. Um, That's it. Okay. Well, and the merch table was <laughs> just right up front. <laughs> I'm curious about this. It's a very here. small village. Um, Even but it was a great time. And, uh, you know, I look forward to getting back there. What What would you so. say? What's the quote you would leave them with? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> I guess if I if I had to to leave them with one quote, I would quote uh, Dave Barnes. Ooh, <laughs> I'm actually trying to remember what you said earlier. You misquoted and you said men instead of man. Oh, not all, not know. all men. You know what I would tell him? What it takes one rule. To, shoot, <laughs> it, it it takes We're one ring. It. <laughs> it takes one ring to rule the Malta. That's it. I'm going to go now. I feel bad. <laughs>